Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to kick off the dynamics topic by looking at vector and scalar quantities. So let's get started. So we'll start by looking at the definition for a scalar quantity and for a vector quantity, and then we'll look at some examples of each. So a scalar quantity, first of all, consists of a magnitude or a size only. So for example, if you were thinking about the scalar distance, then you could say that the total distance travelled by a car was, say, 5 kilometres, and that 5 kilometres with the number and the unit would make up your magnitude or your size. However, we say that a vector quantity consists of a magnitude, i.e. a size, and a direction. So using the same example, instead of thinking about distance as a scalar, we could think about the vector equivalent of distance, which is displacement. So we could say that the car has travelled 5 kilometres in a particular direction, such as 5 kilometres north or 5 kilometres east. And that would be a vector quantity because we've defined the number with the unit, i.e. the magnitude or size, and we've stated the direction. So scalars have magnitude only and vectors have a magnitude and a direction. And some examples that you need to be familiar with in National 5 Physics are these ones here. And you can see the breakdown of scalars on the left and vectors on the right. So for scalars, remember these are things that only require a magnitude and not a direction, whereas vectors do require both a magnitude and a direction. So starting over here, we have distance as a scalar, but we've just said that displacement is the vector equivalent of distance. So that's why I've sort of paired these up side by side. So displacement is the same as a distance with a direction. We then have speed, which is a scalar, so we don't require a direction when we're talking about speeds. But if you're talking about velocities, then you do require a direction because we can see that velocity is the vector equivalent of speed. So that means velocity is a speed with a direction. We then have mass, which is a scalar, because when we talk about masses, we don't give a particular direction because that wouldn't make sense. And then we have acceleration, which is a vector quantity. So when we're talking about objects accelerating, it's useful to know which direction they're going to move in. So that's why accelerations have both a magnitude and a direction. We then have time, which is another scalar, because again, we only think about time as a magnitude or a size. We don't think about time as having a direction because again, that wouldn't really make sense. We then have force, which is our last vector in the table. And this means that when we talk about forces, we are interested in both the magnitude of the force and its direction. So it's very useful to know which direction forces are acting in. And our last scalar is energy. So when we think about energies, we only think about the magnitude or size of the energy. We don't have a direction for the energy. And lastly, one that's not on the list here for vectors would be weight. And remember weight as a type of force. It's the force acting downwards on an object due to gravity. So if force is a vector, then weight must also be a vector. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.